As parents, we are also thinking about our kids and whether they should wear a mask or not, depending on the mandates that you've been given. This is, of course, coming on the heels of Governor Virginia Governor, rather, Glenn Youngkin, and the issuing of an executive order saying that you have a choice, opt in or opt out. It's a mass debate that's playing out in schools across the nation. And Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers, is here to discuss it more. You know, Randy, depending on the school, parents are letting their kids go maskless if they so desire. My kids, we live in Virginia, so they were given a choice. My son still wants to wear it. My daughter doesn't want to wear it. So I'm curious what you're hearing from teachers because it has been an ongoing discussion among all of us. Do you think it's bringing politics into the classroom or is it just a new reality that we're going to be dealing with, personal choice? Look, I think it's bringing politics into the classroom and it's basically politics over public health. I mean, I'm, you know, I've been um, not shy about talking about how I am an asthmatic and I wrote a letter in November before Omicron to Dr. Walensky and Dr. Cardona to say we need a metric for when and an off ramp for when to get masks off of our kids and off of our educators. Um, there's not a person I know who wants to wear these things, but the reason we wear them is to protect ourselves and others. It's not about, particularly in the midst of Omicron, CDC and others have basically said that this has helped protect people from huge dissemination of a very, very transmissible virus. So I would say to the governor of, of Virginia and to others, you know, this, you know, wait till the end of the Omicron spike. None of us want to wear the masks. We want to actually, though, make sure that kids are in school and stay in school. So I, I see this about helping our communities stay safe as opposed to individual personal choice, um, just like other types of, of public health. And that's why I say it's been politicized. And this is from someone who actually wrote a letter in November saying, can we actually have an off ramp for masks? We need an off ramp for masks, you know, um, long term in terms of getting them off our kids and getting them off our teachers. You know, we do know that part of, of stopping the spread is being able to test and isolate positive cases, right? And President Biden handed out $10 billion for schools to test their students. So from your perspective, are they using it? Are schools testing enough? Because I can tell you right now, it's not happening in our school. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is what's happened. Like, again, um, the head of the Rockefeller Foundation and I, in January 2021, over a year ago said, testing is gonna be really important to see what is invisible because a lot of the virus spread was invisible. A lot of people are asymptomatic and you know, and, and you could spread the virus from home to school to back and forth. And so that was one of the things we have been concerned about from the beginning. You're showing on the show the kind of antigen tests which are now, which used to be readily available in the spring in in you know pharmacies and things like that and then they stopped making them and it's as if no one thought oh you know omicron could come or some other covid virus could come and so the private sector stopped making these and as a result come november when we started seeing this huge rise of omicron in south africa knowing full well that this would be helpful in terms of creating assurance to parents, to teachers, to others as they were traveling, going to be with their families, they would know whether they're positive or negative. That's what an antigen test does. So what the Biden administration has done and Joe Biden has done is he's used the Defense Production Act and others to really try to push to get that production. And we're starting to see enough production. And I think what he did with the US Post Office and said, look, you can get these tests at home is really terrific. But all of this is about two or three or four months too late. We sh the private sector should never have stopped producing these tests. Abbott should never have stopped producing it. But I'm glad that we're starting to have enough. So in New York City, there's been a lot of tests that, that, that were in schools at the beginning of January. 
But in lots of other suburban school systems, there haven't been. This was the reason why we had such a crisis in Chicago. The Chicago school system didn't do it well, while the New York City, the Washington, D.C., and the L.A. school system did. Yeah, let's not forget in Chicago, too, the superintendent uh, actually stepping in and helped teach uh, classes there. That was really unbelievable to watch. You know, I wonder, yeah. well, well, I have Well, many you. of us, let me just yes. say, many of us, I volunteered. I still have my teaching license. I volunteered to teach as a sub in New York City. Many of us have stepped up to volunteer to be subs because we know that with the shortages, we need to be all hands on deck. Well, I have to appreciate that, uh, that, you, that you're taking the time to do that, especially with your vast experience. Before you go, Randy, I gotta ask you about this new tool yeah. that the teachers union is betting on to help teachers and students weed out all this misinformation. Obviously, this could be helpful as we learn about COVID, but also current and historical events and things like climate change. Tell us about this new tool. Exactly. So, you know, we're always looking for ways to help and to support. And so what this tool is, is it's called NewsGuard. And um, there are about 7,500 sites, um, journalistic sites that it analyzes. That's about 95% of where we all get our news um, in both the United States and in Western Europe. And it basically has a rating system, a nutritional kind of seal of approval. And if 60% or less of the information is accurate and factual, so if it basically gets a failing grade, but if 60% or more is accurate and factual, then it gets a green. So if a new site gets a green, that means across nine different criteria, a news guard has found it to be accurate and factual. If it gets a red, then it is found to be, you know, a real problem. And there's all sorts of different explanations on, on the site as well. So we're giving this site or this access to the site to every single educator we represent. We really want it in every school across the country so, so that they don't have to try to figure out what's accurate and what isn't. And and and, well and there are there are several conservative sites who have said, why are they doing this? Look, Breitbart gets a green icon. That's a pretty conservative site, but there's a whole bunch of them that do not. So if this will improve their work, everybody's work to be more factual, that's gonna be helpful to, the, to our kids, our journalists, and to the country. Randy Weingarten, always good to talk to you. Appreciate you, Randy, thank, thank you. you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.